is an inspirational journey with our award-winning teachers, classroom leaders to SEL graduate students. My name is Veronica Cavo, and I am the Senior Manager of Partnerships for Inspired Teaching and Learning, and I am happy to be your host today for this inspirational webinar. Before we get started, I'm going to share a few housekeeping notes. For best viewing of this webinar, it's recommended that you shut down your other browsers. If you are watching this webinar live, you will receive a copy of the Certificate of Completion from GoToWebinar within 48 hours. You can also download a copy of the slide deck today under the handout tab on your GoToWebinar panel. Both Inspire and Harmony host monthly webinars where thought leaders and educators share best practices and tools to support social emotional learning. These presentations are the opinions and the content of our guest speakers and may not necessarily be a direct representation of Harmony or Inspire. Throughout today's discussion, we hope to make this a conversation among our panelists and all of you. Please use the question box on your GoToWebinar control plan panel to submit questions, comments, or ponderings for, your, for our guests. And as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording within the next week. I would like to share the goals for our webinar with you. We hope that today you will reflect on the power of the truly inspirational teacher and how educators have been shining light throughout the pandemic. We want you to hear the inspirational journey of five award-winning teachers who tapped into their resources such as Harmony and Inspire to keep relationships strong the last two years and now shine as SEL leaders in their communities. And finally, explore the importance of continuing to deepen your knowledge of SEL through continued education in the Masters in Social Emotional Learning at National University. We are pleased to have a special guest here today to kick off this inspirational discussion. Dr. Robert Lee is a national recognized expert in urban education and community situated teaching and learning with a wide ranging list of accomplishments as an educator, culturally responsive community, community advocate and a visionary leader. The collective impact of his work has raised teacher quality, improved school pro progress and student learning, transferred public schools and spaces into community-driven learning centers, and developed socially just and equity-focused educators who advocate for their children and families they serve. And to top all of this, Dr. Lee also serves as the Dean of the Sanford College of Education at National University. Welcome, Dr. Lee. Thank you very much, Veronica, for that warm introduction. It is my honor to be here and to provide these opening remarks as we gather today to reflect on the powerful impact of teachers in all of our lives. You don't have to look very hard to see that educators across the country continue to persevere despite all the challenges that they face. And I'm not even referencing the obstacles that COVID has put in their way. No one can deny how this pandemic has changed all of us. It has created unimaginable and untenable solutions for our schools and teachers. Two years after our first pivot to online teaching, communities and families across the United States continue to struggle, grappling with everyday challenges and basic needs of safety and health, and yet it is our teachers who are caring for our children and their social emotional well being. Teaching and learning in an ever fluid, ever changing world, while also ensuring they provide the best level of responsive teaching that our young children so desperately need. Today, we take pause as a community of educators, parents, and advocates to both celebrate what it means to be a teacher but to also express deep gratitude for their professional service. For every teacher who shows up to make a difference, who every day finds ways to encourage children so that they may continue to dream, 
who every day pushes young adults to stay engaged in the curriculum and connects that material back to their own cultural context and who every day, whether they can even recognize it in that moment or not, are changing lives. We say thank you. If you would, and if you're comfortable with it, please close your eyes for a moment. I want you to think back, way back, right? What are some of your earliest memories of school? Do you see yourself? Okay, now look around. What do you see? Maybe some colorful bulletin boards filled with student art or classroom work. Maybe there's a classroom library with a carpet, remember those, and a bean bag, or a listening lab. What else do you see? Do you see your teacher? Great. Now start walking back toward present day with me. Flip forward as if you're browsing a new book at the library. Only this time, this book is all about your life. Each chapter represents another year, another grade. As you flip through, take a moment to pause as you see yourself changing, not only with your outward physical appearance, but what are you reading? What are you thinking? What are you dreaming about? And who was part of this influence? Okay, now flip a little bit faster. Your experiences in elementary school as a whole, middle or junior high school, were you an athlete or maybe you worked on the school's newspaper in high school? What about community college? Did you attend a university, maybe even graduate school? Who were the most inspirational people in your life during those important years? Okay. Now open your eyes. I want everyone to find a piece of paper, okay? I want you to add a name or two as a reminder to lift up this educator who made a difference in your life. Name them, put them out on your social media, and I urge you to see if you can even find them, to connect with them and to let them know how inspirational they were to you. For me, I've been very fortunate to have several teachers who really met me where I was. From Ms. Ahern, my second grade teacher who worked with me after school to help me become a better reader. In those early years, I was a rambunctious kid who struggled with reading. I'd rather get in trouble and get sent to the principal's office than face being called on to do a read aloud. But Ms. Ahern, she got it. She neither allowed me to escape cl class nor embarrassed me in front of my peers, but instead worked with me patiently. As she wrote in my report card, way back when, when a report card was more than just a letter grade, she said, Robert has great potential. Let's make sure we celebrate the small milestones along his way. Or there was Mr. Bolt. He was my industrial arts teacher in junior high school. What a great and appropriate name for someone in the industrial arts. He taught me a lesson that I still think about today and is applicable in so many different ways. He said, measure twice and cut once. Now, interestingly enough, while I was working in my mom's kitchen over Christmas this past year, I was amazed that the cutting board that I had made in Mr. Bolt's class was still intact today and still in use over 40 years later. Next slide. Or there was Mr. Nicholson, my high school English teacher, who knew I was new to school and insisted that I try out for the school play, The Music Man, probably also sensing that I was feeling a bit lonely and knowing that after school rehearsals would help me connect with others while, while also helping me work through the worst case of stage fright ever. Guess what? He was right on both accounts. In college, Dr. Martinez became a mentor to me. Next slide. Teaching me what it meant to be inclusive by challenging me to do my clinical work at a school nested within a juvenile correctional facility. Within this space, I learned the critical importance of teaching while understanding context and allowing culture to inform what and how we teach. And finally, Dr. Radner, my doctoral dissertation chair, who taught me so many lessons along the way, including how institutions of higher learning can develop truly collaborative partnerships with local schools. 
I also learned about the robust engagements that can be realized, especially with social and emotional learning, when parents and our community members are a part of the solution to build a more equitable and just educational system. Now, I was fortunate to have all these incredible teachers in my life, at times on the edge of a precipice. And as you flip through your mental book a few minutes ago, how many of you were also standing at the crossroads when a teacher intervened in your life? The power behind this moment is knowing with absolute certainty that we are all here today because of a teacher in our life. And it is in that spirit and my honor to welcome and congratulate our National University Teachers of the Year. We raise up these five teachers, not only for their hard work, compassion, and dedication during a time of so much COVID uncertainty, but also highlight and punctuate the importance of social emotional learning when school-based stress and trauma for children is also on the rise. These teachers exemplify powerful te teaching. They are well prepared, engaged in the material, making it relevant to their students, creating an inviting and student-centered classroom that is both well-managed and bustling with energy. Each of our honorees are skilled at guiding their students. They see them and acknowledge their ideas, their strengths, their needs, and sometimes their powerful struggles, motivating and pushing them at just the right time to dig deeper, while also knowing when to nurture and provide comfort. They make learning serious, but fun, never losing sight of the enjoyment of celebrating those magical aha moments when a student gets it. And they draw resources from their own personal reservoirs to find the strength, courage, creativity, and resiliency to persevere for their children, for their families, for the communities they serve, and for our society. While each of our honorees found their way into the classroom following a different path, each is on their own journey of discovery, continuing to hone their craft. As Dean of the Sanford College of Education, I cannot wait to welcome them to National University as graduate students. As their students today become the next generation leaders of tomorrow, what will they say about their former teachers when they look back 10, 20, or 30 years from now? Well, I can't answer that question, but it is with great expectation that we wait and find out. For now, let's rally and welcome our National University Teachers of the Year to our stage. Now, sending it back to you, Veronica. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, for, encour for your encouraging words and for sharing part of your life with us today. Uh, thank you so much for also recognizing the tremendous value of our teachers every day, and especially now more than ever, as they navigate these immense challenges uh, today. We are grateful to all the teachers who made an impact on our lives, um, and the teachers who continue to inspire their students across the country today. So now this is where the excitement comes. It is my honor to introduce the five of the, na uh, the nation's most inspirational teachers who embody everything Dr. Lee just shared with us. These teachers were recognized as the National University Teacher of the Year for their respective region. They were recognized for both their inspirational teaching qualities and embedding social emotional learning in their teaching every day. They were recognized with a $10,000 cash prize and a scholarship to our SEL graduate programs at National University. We are delighted to have them here today to join our panel discussion. Please welcome Reagan Duncan from Vista, California, Eric Hale from Dallas, Texas, Maggie McHugh from La Crosse, Wisconsin, Melody Hawkins from Knoxville, Tennessee, and Olivia Leon from the Bronx, New York. Thank you all so much for being here today. You can read more about their backgrounds on our National University Award Winners page. 
You can also take a photo of the QR code to get there directly. All right. Okay, so now we have some topics uh, to lead a discussion with our National University Teacher Award regional winners so that we can learn a bit more about what inspires them and how they have navigated these challenging times. We also learned about the resource, we will also learn about the resources they have used to support their work and what they most look forward to in the new year. We will start with the important topic of inspiration as each of you inspire your students. I'm sure there are many who have inspired you along your journey as well. So let me begin. Olivia, who has most inspired you as a teacher? Thank you, Veronica and Dr. Lee. It's a really wonderful question to start this. And I instantly think of second grade and the teacher who I actually called yesterday to invite today, and hopefully she's here. So I have thought of Mrs. Ford. She was my special, special education teacher starting in elementary school. I was classified at the age of four with a learning disability, and I was very aware of it. I was pulled out, and I really despised leaving the classroom and the transition. But when I was with Mrs. Ford and I was in her space, those feelings just disappeared. I felt safe and seen and knew that I could be successful in that space. So when I decided to go into education, I knew I had to do special education because I know and I knew that I wanted my students to feel the way I felt when I was with Mrs. Ford. So Mrs. Ford, if you're here tonight, Today, thank you so much for everything you did for me. Thank you so much, Olivia. That was such a great inspirational story. And I hope that your teacher is here today to listen to those awards. I'm sure she, she appreciates it. Um, Eric, please let me know who has most inspired you as a teacher. Oh, you know what, Eric, we can't hear you. We see that beautiful smile, but I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now and that bright smile too. So go on, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> well, to be honest with you guys, my path's a little bit different. Um, I actually don't share that same story. Um, I'm actually chasing the ghosts of the educators that I needed as a child. Um, during my K through 12 education, uh, I was filled forward. And so, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma is attached to that. And so, I'm basically the chief of the if tribe, you know, the children that need a little bit more. And so that's my why. And that's why I teach. Um, I'm trying to model that you can turn pain into your purpose. And so I bring that energy every day into my classroom. And I represent for the kids who are also, you know, they're treated like they're the virus when I believe that they're the cure. So that's my story. Thank you so much for sharing, Eric. Reagan, what has inspired you to keep teaching despite the challenges we have faced? Oh my goodness, what a year last year. Can we all just take a moment, breathe and say, thank you, we made it through, right? <laughs> last year was hands down the most challenging year of my career. And I'm sure that most of the educators worldwide, not just in, in the United States of America, can share that sentiment. So when I tell you that it was difficult to find something to inspire me daily, that's a lie. It was difficult to find something to inspire me hourly <laughs> as, you're, as you're staring at a screen with first graders that are, you know, tap dancing around the, the iPad and showing you their cat and having all sorts of animals come to school with you. Uh, what inspired me was music. Uh, music not only inspires your, your heart and your soul, but it also inspires your mind. I was lucky enough to get to accidentally bump into the founder of Guitars in the Classroom while walking through my neighborhood. And she said, would you like to learn how to play ukulele? And I said, yes. 
And as you can see, I've got my ukulele here. I started learning how to play ukulele, quickly fund did fundraising as quick as I could to get a full set of class ukuleles for my students, sent them home with them. They had them at home and I got to teach ukulele every day. I taught ukulele daily. I continue to do that and have actually expanded it and now have an after school program as well. And I'm looking to push that district wide eventually. But my passion has been reignited for teaching. I infuse social emotional learning with ukulele in the classroom. And that has just lit a fire underneath me, changed the way I teach and definitely has inspired me to not just continue teaching, but to expand an after school program to get more kids interested, excited, and more students and teachers excited to use utilize ukulele and social emotional learning in their classrooms. That's my inspiration. Thanks so much, uh, Veronica, for asking that question. Reagan, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so as an educator in an underserved, under-resourced community, um, my students all share similar stories of inequitable experiences. I've had to really make sure that I'm teaching with a great purpose and a, and a very specific vision. Um, and that vision is what has kept me inspired. My vision has always been that the learning experiences I provide for my students will help them to become positive contributors to their communities. So being fully aware of the disparities that my students experience keeps me inspired to give them the best tools possible for an opportunity to change their trajectory. They may not get a second chance or a do-over. The opportunity exists now. Um, and I want them ready for the world as soon as they step foot off their high school graduation stage and embark on their post-secondary life. So the vision of my students' success is what has kept me inspired despite all the craziness that we've experienced over the last year. So amazing, both Reagan and Melody, such awesome uh, stories uh, that you can share with us as you challenge, I mean, na navigated that challenges uh, that we've had these last you know, two years. Thank you so much for uh, bringing a smile, at least to my face, and I'm pretty sure many in our audience. All right, so Maggie, I'm gonna move it on to you. How have you inspired, been inspired by your students these past two years? Yeah, I was listening to my um, uh, new friends and, and colleagues out there in our education world. And I know Reagan, you said it was tough to think of what you know inspired you maybe at that hour by hour basis until um, your um, ukulele. Uh, for me, it, it really is the students. And I think for most of us as educators, it really is the students who are inspiring us. Um, and the words that came to mind when I was thinking about how they've inspired, two words, resiliency and creativity. Our students have been so resilient. They keep showing up. They keep coming and bringing whatever they can bring to us, um, whether that is just themselves, like just showing up for some of those students is their resiliency, bringing a positive attitude, um, you know, or just a, a desire to learn. And then I think of their creativity. Um, you know, if, if nothing else, we have all in this entire world had to learn how to be flexible, how to change, how to pivot. And kids have done that in the most creative ways. Um, and I think about a student who, with her project, um, I, I teach in a project-based learning school, and her project, she wanted to show insecurities. Um, and she's been doing this photo essay. And the hard part about that photo essay is that all everyone's masked. And she's been saying, well, it's been really tough uh, to get the photos I want because of these masks. And so, you know, she thought about for a while and two days later she came back and she had made a whole set of masks with different faces and emotions on it. So she could show insecurities through the mask. And so just that creativity, the pivoting, um, the recognizing that, um, you know, we are all working as hard as we can to be our best selves, but knowing our students are doing that same thing to be them you know the best version that they can be um, and so I, I just continue to be inspired by my students their resiliency and their creativity thanks so much for asking veronica oh isn't that the truth maggie uh we often think like oh we're worried so much about our kids but they are so resilient um and i'm so glad that you were able to share that story with us today um and thank you all for sharing all those great stories um for this uh, inspirational part of our webinar. Um, we'd love to hear from the audience now. Um, where do you get your inspiration? 
So please take a few minutes to share in the chat. Um, and as you put your responses there, um, I could share a little bit about where I get my source of inspiration. Um, I was also a teacher, I was a high school teacher, and many people said like, why high school? And I said, why not? They're great, they're funny, uh, you always see that light bulb click. Um, so I always think about my students, um, and currently I, I have a mentee as well. I always want to just kind of keep that uh, role going for myself, even though I'm not in the classroom. Um, but our kids are really who uh, inspire me because they're the ones who are going to be leading um, our country, our world, our societies. And so just hearing of all these wonderful stories that our winners have shared and that we just got started um, it makes me really excited and really inspired. Um, Amanda, uh, are you able to share some of the responses from our audience? Yes, we're getting some great responses in the question box. Knowing that students need that inspiration and extra care away from home. My source of inspiration comes from my second grade teacher, Mrs. McBride. I get my inspiration from seeing students grasp concepts and my kids. I am inspired by the students. When that light bulb moment happens, wow. That's awesome, Amanda. Thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, what our audience uh, reflected on. So now let's go back to our inspirational panel. Um, as you look back on these last two years, a very challenging two years, um, you know, and all of these challenges that you have faced while teaching throughout a life-changing pandemic, I'm still kind of in awe of how we landed into a pandemic. We love to hear some of your reflections and the impact it has on education. So I'll start it off with Olivia. What will you never forget about teaching during the pandemic? Ooh, that's, you said it perfectly, the challenges, they, we faced a lot. I mean, our bedrooms became our classroom, which became a gym, which became a dance theater. It became everything. And what I truly will never forget is how classrooms and learning can really be anywhere. And that's really what sits with me. Even though every day they would say, I would just want to meet you in person. I just want to meet my classmates. I just want to actually physically be with each other those were difficult moments that it was extremely uh, upsetting honestly to say that but it also was exciting i mean i i experienced things that i've never experienced teaching in new york city through zoom learning i was on zoom for seven hours every day and sometimes you know pets would just come into the screen one day there would be a pet bird on someone's shoulder i never knew how many students had snakes before so we got to learn about what snakes eat. Parents jumped in the video and would start teaching the kids. So even though it was extremely difficult, it it, it led it, it was able to bring that teaching into their homes. And their their parents started teaching me, and I almost became a facilitator in this conversation that wouldn't have happened in the classroom. So. It was difficult, but I'm almost grateful for the experience that I had, as well as the families and the students. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Olivia. What a what a great example. Maggie, I'm going to bring it to you as well. What will you never forget about teaching during the pandemic? Yeah, uh, Olivia, that homeschool connection is so critical. Um, and yeah, I saw a lot of different bedrooms and family rooms, but I think what stands out to me is the sense of community we were still able to develop online um, with the students. And so I had sixth graders starting middle school, which is always scary face to face because they're coming from so many different elementary schools but now they were coming together and the students had to find a way to connect online
online and get to know each other. So a few things stood out my classroom, and maybe it's my personality, but my sixth graders decided to pull pranks on me on Zoom. So one day, and I don't know how they orchestrated it, they all changed their name. And so in the waiting room, I had 22 Maggie McHughes, like spelled exactly correct with my capital H and no spacing. So every kid changed their name. One day they all decided to come and wear really weird hats. One day they all pretended to sleep on Zoom. Um, I, I can't ever forget the day that I had kids in blow up dinosaur costumes just sitting there on Zoom. And they were just waiting, right? Waiting for kids to engage or wearing a bucket on their head. Just trying to see who was going to say something. So to me, it just, it's incredible that a sense of community could still be developed. Um, and again, that just brings me back to how important relationships are um, and just bring the fun to, to wherever we're at, face-to-face, -face, online. Kids want to have fun. They want to engage and get to know each other. Thanks, Veronica. Maggie, when you said uh, they were your students were creative earlier on, you were not kidding. How how awesome that they came in, uh, even though I know there are little pranks on you, but how awesome uh, that they all coordinated that. That's so great. Thank you for sharing. Melody, I'm going to go to you now. What has changed the most for you in the last two years in education? Oh, wow. Um... I could make a list, right? <laughs> um, if, if I think about what has changed the most, um, I would have to say it's been the way I use my voice as an advocate for my students. I, I've always known what my students are capable of. I've always raised my voice within my school for sure um, to discuss what my students are capable of and what, what they need. And, and everyone who knows Melody Hawkins knows how I feel about SEL. So I've, I've always done that, but this year, um, or these last two years, I had to really be intentional about the way that I, I advocate for my students. Um, so I've been lending my voice more to um, initiatives that directly impact my students and will serve the greater school community. Um, I'm thinking about issues that touch on equity. So conversations about um, diversity, the meaning, of, the meaning of equity, trauma-informed practices, our leaders have been really trying to have more conversations about our students and um, especially our, our students in communities of high need. And I'm glad that our leaders are having these discussions, but I also feel that it's critically important that they include teachers. We're the ones that are closest to the students every day. So I've been more intentional about ensuring that my voice as an educator, as a science educator, uh, is present at the table so that decisions about the needs of our students, especially when we're thinking about SEL, would, so that those decisions about our students are made with full knowledge of how a decision will impact our, our students and also how it will impact our teachers. I would think that's the way that I've, I've um, things have changed the most for me in the last few years. Uh, what about you, Eric? What are you thinking? Well, you know, to be honest with me, it's utilizing my community of care. Uh, to meet the needs of my my school community, and so sadly, um, in my situation, uh, the com the community that I serve, this is not our first rodeo. We've dealt with ice raids, and from the ice raids, we were hit by Air Three tornado that ravaged our community, and then after that tornado, then we rolled into the pandemic, and so just really relying on my community of care and holding them accountable to help me meet the needs of my students, and so. We've came together and we were able to raise $50,000 to fix the gym. When we didn't have enough technology, the community, the business community in Dallas, they came together and raised $30,000 to make sure that we were one-to-one -one with technology. When I told them that many of my students in my school community did not have enough food, Sam's Club reached out to me and raised food. Christmas, you name it. So just really understanding the power of community and that SEL can be used as the bridge that connects the community and holding all stakeholders accountable. So that's what we have going on in Dallas. Wow, Eric, that's awesome. $50,000, you, you, you got it going. That's great. And I'm so glad that you were able to, to help all your students you know, with that. Thank you so much for sharing, Melody and Eric.
Um, okay, so let's go on to some resources. Um, thank you all for sharing your reflections and of course the valuable insights um, about these times educators will surely never forget, right? Um, I'm sure that all of you have tapped into many resources to help you stay motivated and to take care of yourself too, which is super critical to this work that uh, you all do. Um, I would love to hear about your go-to resources and how they've supported your work. Um, so I'm gonna start it off with Reagan. Um, what resources have you tapped into the last two years to continue to motivate yourself or your students? Well, if you can't guess that I'm going to say music, then you weren't listening. <laughs> um, I actually, if you'll, uh, if you go and do the QR code where it says Reagan's recommended resources, you'll see a couple of different things in there. One is the link to Guitars in the Classroom. So Guitars in the Classroom was a chance meeting for me in my neighborhood, but it's actually a um, a program that you can get trained on how to. Uh, implement ukulele or guitar in the classroom, but not just how to implement in the classroom. They teach you how to play. So it's free music lessons for you as an educator. It's online and on Zoom. So when you go to guitars in the classroom dot, uh, I think it's dot org or dot com. When you go there, you'll be able to register for courses for free. You can do them on Zoom after school. You'll learn how to play ukulele or guitar in the classroom. You can continue taking classes so that you can get better yourself or even learn how to teach ukulele to your students or guitar if that would be something you'd like to do. Uh, I'm teaching courses myself now for the, for the program and I'll be teaching courses on how to integrate social emotional learning in through teaching ukulele in the classroom. So that's one, Guitars in the Classroom, go check it out, totally free. The next one is uh, discovering five love languages in the classroom. If you already know about the love languages, five of them, words of affirmation, quality time, uh, acts of service, receiving or giving gifts, and safe touch. They changed it from touch to safe touch for elementary schools. Uh, there's an amazing book by Gary Chapman. It's called Discovering the Five Love Languages in the Classroom. This helps students not only understand how they like to be loved, it helps them understand how others like to be loved and helps you as the educator understand how children like to be loved. You'd think that most kids would want giving gifts, right? Like they wanna receive gifts. No, most kids want quality time. They want time with you, their teacher. Teacher. They would rather receive a reward um, of getting time with you, like during recess or lunch. They'd rather have that hands down over a treat. That's something they normally would, you would think they would pick gifts. So that's a great book to start looking at, reading for yourself, and then maybe implementing in your own class, um, in your own classroom. And then I think I put one other one, uh, music by subject. So I utilize music in the classroom all the time to change the mood, to either elevate and get kids motivated and excited or to bring it down, calm it down. There are, there's this amazing book. It's called The Green Book of Songs by Subject. I'll show you, this is what it actually looks like. It's called The Green Book of Songs by Subject and it's in there too. And you can go through and flip to any subject or anything you're thinking about and there'll be a song for it. And now in the days of being able to download download so easily you don't even have to download you just go to YouTube type it in and you can play that song immediately to invigorate and get your kids excited or to calm them back down so pretty cool and then the last one I actually put Harmony SEL in mine but you don't need to do that you can go on one of the other ones right there so those are some great resources for you hopefully you'll utilize them and enjoy them if you have any questions about them feel free to message me Thank you so much, Reagan. I, I love all those resources. And when you say free, um, we, we like that even better. <laughs> all right, Olivia, how has Harmony supported your work? And how do you think the updates uh, coming to the Harmony third edition will continue to support your work in 2022? Okay, Harmony has, and I'm not just saying this because this is a Harmony webinar and Inspire, but I'm, all I have to say is Z. So for many of you who may not know Z, Z is part of Harmony. And this character has truly allowed us, as in the students and myself and teachers, to have consistency through a pandemic when it truly did not seem possible. Whether they were hybrid, back to remote, zooming from their car, zooming from an apartment, zooming out of state, it was constantly changing. Every day was something different. And this character, along with 
the connection cards and the commonality cards that Harmony provides allowed myself and the students to feel grounded in a consistent way to validate their feelings, to hold them accountable and honestly hold me accountable. Um, I'll never forget there was, if you ever taught fractions on a number line to eight year olds, it can be quite challenging. And I was teaching, I was teaching it through Zoom and I was getting a little frustrated and I just muted myself. I didn't say anything. And this one child who was on the autism spectrum and had some challenges expressing himself appropriately, unmuted himself and said, Miss Leone, I see you're frustrated. I think you need to just breathe. Take Z, hold on to Z, do all the things you tell us to do, but I think you should do this with us. And it, I mean, it was my, I was so shocked because this child is teaching me, is, is holding me accountable and is able to use the resources that I was giving him. And it allowed me to be a little silly and just show my personality after teaching for many hours. And when it comes to the third edition, I know that there are the new Clubhouse friends. So Z will have many more diverse new little friends that will join uh, Z. And as well as having access to research and evidence-based practices through social emotional learning. So I'm extremely excited for the third edition. That's an amazing, uh, Olivia. Thank you much for you know sharing that. Um, I, I love the stories and I mean, who cannot like Z, right? It's so cute. <laughs> All right, Melody, this one's to you. Um, one of my favorite, um, uh, inspire modules, which is our professional development, uh, resource for our teachers is coping with teacher stress. And haven't we had teacher stress these last two years. I mean, we've already been stressed, right? <laughs> but you know, now add a pandemic to it, you just top it with a, a, a cherry of stress. Um, what have you done this year to help manage the stress of additional challenges this year? Thank you so much for that question. Um, two words, well, hyphenated, one word, self-care. <laughs> I've had to really prioritize my self-care. Um, as I mentioned before, I serve in a high-needs community, um, under-resourced community. And in the past two years, the disparities that already existed prior to the pandemic have just been magnified in my community. Um, economic disparities, disparities in access to resources for supporting mental and emotional health, certainly academic disparities, all of those things show up in the classroom in many different ways. And that requires me to be ready to pivot at any moment between multiple roles. Teacher, obviously, right? But I've also had to be a coach, a mentor, a mother, an aunt, a counselor, a detective, a referee. I've been known to brush my students' hair while going over the lesson objectives because for whatever reason, no one was home to help me with their hair that morning. And we all know how physical appearance can affect the student's confidence, right? So in one class session, I wear all of those hats. Um, this means that I am constantly giving a lot of myself to my students. And I've had to learn to pause and ask myself, Melody, is this task on the to-do list something that can wait until later? And if the task can't wait until later, then I find myself asking a different question. What am I going to do to replenish myself when I am done with this task? Because if I'm not functioning at a, at a healthy capacity, then I will not be able to provide my students with an effective learning experience. And I certainly will not be able to pour into them in a way that is necessary for their success. It's that same idea um, as needing to put your oxygen mask on before assisting someone else with theirs. So as educators, we're expected to be selfless, which is admirable, but the reality is we must be sensitive and mindful of our own needs just as much as we are mindful of others' needs. And whatever it is that we need to do to tend to ourselves in a healthy way, now is the time to make our health a priority. Whether it's going on a walk, simply sitting in nature, which is something I love to do, reading a book that's not related to education, right? Just reading for fun. Um, and, and let's not forget therapy, group or individual based, prayer, meditation, exercise, spending time with loved ones. I'm naming all the things that I've done. Um, but now is the time to prioritize ourselves as we continue to navigate 
in this selfless profession. So that is what I have done and will continue to do. Thank you so much, Melody, for sharing all of those great strategies. I hope that you all take some time to, to do that. Uh, you've mentioned some really great ones there. Um, Maggie, this one is for you. One of our other Inspire modules is supporting trauma-exposed students. How have you helped students who have experienced so much trauma these last two years? Yeah, I, I don't know if I have a, a magic answer um, because we all keep working and, and trauma uh, in students is such a huge topic. But what I can say is that I try to show up and be there for them every single day. And I think the biggest thing for me has been really reframing um, what behavior is. I'm really looking at behavior now as just a cue, a cue for students to tell me how they're feeling, where they're at, what's going on. Um, and even if the behavior is um, breaking down because they, they can't find a pencil, you know, it's not really the pencil. They're not freaked out about not finding a pencil. What's deeper? What's going on that that student's um, behavior is is not in line with where it needs to be? And then how can we how can we create a safe space for students to be in? And I guess my biggest thing is I have a space in my classroom called Space and Time. And literally, it's just a corner, um, and it has like a little sand garden that you can rake and some um, different uh, globe things that um, you flip over in the gel comes down and it's just a place to calm down. It's got some posters that have some different breathing techniques like doorway breathing or belly breathing. Um, and so often uh, when students need a place to go and they don't know how to regulate, just giving them that space and time and normalizing it. And so just like Olivia, whose students said, hey, you need Mr. Z right now and um, you know, you need Z and, and you need to do this. I sometimes will go to space and time myself and show students Students, it's okay if you need that space, if you need that time to calm down, to regulate, to get your emotions um, in a place where you can be successful, um, or at least get to a place where you can verbalize what's going on and, and how I can help you move forward. Um, so that's one thing I use, is, it's called space and time. Um, but I'm curious, Eric, I know you've worked with a lot of students in trauma. What are some things you've done, Eric? Well, really for me, um... I just try to provide access to hope, love, and joy. Um, so when I think about it, I'm really just serving supper. And so when I say serving sup supper, what I'm talking about is many of the children that I serve are emotionally malnutritioned. And so I'm providing food for their soul. And so one of the ways that I do that is through music, like Reagan. Um, I actually have a turntable set up in my classroom in the back of my classroom. And so I taught myself how to DJ. And then I actually taught myself how to produce hip hop instrumentals. And so what I do is I produce a mixtape, a classroom mixtape. So while we're loving and learning and moving and grooving and sharing and doing our meetups and doing our community time, just really learning from each other, the music in the background is Carlos. And Carlos knows that this song represents the love that Mr. Hill has for me. So his song might have mariachis in it. It might have 808s. It's got different type of drum beats. But every child's song is an expression of my love for them. And it represents how unique they are as a learner and as a student. And so I'm trying to always provide them a safe place where they can be fearless in their failures. And they can always feel forward. I'm a firm believer that some of the brightest minds come from the darkest places. And so I challenge myself to provide that type of space and we just keep moving and grooving. Thank you so much, uh, Maggie and Eric. I love the grooving, moving and grooving. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of these resources. As you can see on this slide, um, you have easy access with the QR codes. Um, where you can access our no cost harmony and inspire resources, which we have heard from our educator partners that have um, that it has been valuable during these times. And then of course, in addition, you'll have Reagan's favorite go to resources that she put together for us. Thank you so much, Reagan, for making those available to our audience. So let's move ahead to looking ahead. 
um, you know, we've heard a little bit more about what inspires you, what has motivated you and, you know, what has supported you the last two years. So now as we look forward to the year ahead, what are you thinking about what is needed for your students, especially in terms of SEL, social emotional learning? I'm going to start it off with Reagan. What are you most looking forward to with your students in 2022? Take a wild guess. <laughs> uh, well, I'm really, really excited because um, like Eric, I've been fundraising my little tail off and I was able to receive a $5,000 grant to expand my ukulele club. Um, that was really exciting with the possibility of getting another 5,000 next year. So that's pretty exciting. Now, money aside, what I'm excited about is being able to engage with our students and get them engaged in their learning. But I really think it's more important even just getting them engaged, uh, creating that buy-in, but allowing them to express themselves and in the end, empowering them. So that's that's what I'm building right now. I'm hoping that I can work with the district as well. Right now I'm doing it in my own school site. So I've built an after school program. It's my baby. And I'm really excited to be able to expand that where I am able to engage the students, not just in their learning, but in, in playing ukulele and learning and being able to write songs um, and using social emotional learning books as anchors for songwriting. It's really exciting which allows students to express themselves in an appropriate way. Uh, we have a lot of homeless students at my school, actually, many students in shelters, uh, low socioeconomic status around my school site. So students at our school are going through tra trauma on a daily basis. Their home life is chaos. So the only place that they know that is safe, it's a safe space, it's a solid space, it's a structured space, is also the place where they're going to combat with the most problems because it's not something they're comfortable or used to. So giving kids a way to express themselves appropriately, music has been that venue and music has been that that saving grace for actually a lot of kids at our school site. So I'm excited to bring that out and be able to continue using harmony and fusing harmony and social emotional learning throughout our ukulele program. Very exciting. That's my 20, 2022 goal is to expand that to the district. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck, Reagan. I'm sure you'll do great and you'll meet that goal. Melody, how do you plan to continue to infuse SEL in your practices in 2022? Um, I'm so excited about the year ahead. I um, Not only do I get to spend a lot of time with students, but I also get to spend a lot of time with my teacher colleagues and with um, our school leadership and our district leadership. So my plan is to continue to advocate for the need for SEL. Um, I believe my students know my story pretty well and they know what I'm gonna talk about when I come up to them. But I also want adults to really understand the impact and the importance of social emotional learning and what it can do um, on a day-to-day -day with students. Um, as a science teacher, I think it is pretty unique that, um, that sometimes people don't associate social emotional learning with science. But um, I enjoy merging the two into the conversations that I have with my colleagues. So I want to continue to advocate for it. I want to empower um, my colleagues to really realize how they can include it in their practices. I don't want my classroom to be the only classroom that my students come to and experience what it looks like to be in a safe, secure, inclusive learning environment. I want them to know that wherever they go. So I want to um, to collaborate with with my with my friends in the teaching world and with the leadership that we have supporting us and be innovative in our approach to SEL. There's so many resources and in some ways are very simple, quick ways to just infuse a little nugget and it can just completely change the environment and the atmosphere for our students and really give them that boost of confidence to show them how to have empathy and connect with each other. So I want to really be um, be a, a thought partner and a friend for my colleagues, for the adults in the world, so that we can set up this, this space and place for our students to really feel successful. Thank you so much, Melody. It looks like you have a really great plan uh, for 2022. Maggie, I'm gonna go to you next. What are your words of advice to your fellow educators as we start the new calendar year? Yeah. I don't know if I have advice, but I'm going to give them permission. And I think we all need permission at time. And the permission is just this. Give yourself some grace. 
give your students some grace. Take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. And smile. And with that, someone who has an incredible smile, Eric, what about you? What advice or permission are you giving teachers? Uh, the only advice I got is to always remember that the language of love doesn't need a translator. Love these students. Lead with love and the learning will happen. That's it. <laughs> that's all I got for you. No, that's great. Isn't that the truth, right? Thank you so much, um, all of you, for sharing what, um, you know, what you're going to be doing looking ahead in this year. Uh, but all right, Olivia, we're not done yet. Um, this is such an exciting next chapter for you. As a future graduate student, what are you most looking forward to as a master's in SEL student at National University? Thank you, Veronica. I am extremely excited, just similar to you, um, what Melody said, to be able to collaborate and have that space to collaborate with teachers across the country. In the past few weeks, just getting to know the four of you has been extremely rewarding and just being able to bounce ideas off of each other. And we're all over the country. So being able to have that time and space is extremely exciting. And also just the opportunity to grow and thrive and take and take these new practices and bring them to my students and bring them to colleagues and parents and families and colleagues and community in the South Bronx. That's awesome. Good luck on your journey, Olivia. We're, we're all rooting for you. <laughs> um, and I know, and I think we all know here on this webinar that you all will continue to be superheroes today and of course, for the days to come. So thank you all, round of applause for you, um, you know, on all your hard work that you've been doing. Um, I would like to move on. Um, I, I know that our webinar is, is almost over, but I would like to uh, uh, close out, uh, or I should say before we close out, to introduce you to um, Dr. Pulowski. She is the chair of the teacher education department at National University. She is dedicated to advancing diversity, inclusivity, access, equity, and social emotional learning in teacher education programs and clinical practice. So I just wanna give her some time to share a few words with us. Welcome Dr. Pulowski. Good afternoon, everybody. And gosh, oh my gosh, how do I, how do you even follow all that up, right? Um, Eric, Maggie, Melody, Reagan, and Olivia, I'm so proud of each and every one of you. You are not only inspired with an ED at the end, but you're so inspirational. Um, I'm so excited you're going to be part of our, you know, part of our program moving forward and be ambassadors um, and become SEL leaders throughout this country. Thank you for being that teacher who's going to be remembered for years to come, just as Dr. Lee said at the very beginning. You all inspire me as a teacher of education chair for um, not only hope and the love that you all talked about for our students moving forward, but for our teachers. Um, you know, you all talked about where you get your inspiration from, um, diverse backgrounds, music, perspectives, um, your purpose, your vision, your resiliency, creativity in the classroom your hope, love, and joy, food for the soul. Oh my gosh, I'm, I have that on quotes already, by the way, Eric, just to let you know. And <clears throat> how you are all giving of yourselves. Um, you all deserve a standing round of applause for who you are and what you do. Um, not only just because of this, how you, this past year has been hard, but really, truly, your heart. You all showed us your heart today, and so I really, Thank you for that and um, commend you and I'm so excited to get to know you further. And I would like to introduce to you, Dr. Cynthia Sistic Chandler. She is the Academic Program Director of the MASL program, the Masters of Arts in Social and Emotional Learning, which you'll be entering. And we're so proud of this program and we're so excited for you to be a part of it. So I turn it over to you and I am here for you. So please, anybody on this webinar can reach out at any time. Here you go. Thank you so much, Dr. Pulowski, and hello, fellow SEL enthusiasts. I again am Dr. C, and I'm the Academic Program Director for the Master's of Arts in SEL. 
and so inspired and so looking forward to having you and potentially others on the webinar today to join our MASL program. Since 2020 of September, we have inspired over 200 educators like you, and they in turn have inspired us. Our program really helps to develop SEL from the inside out through reflection, through personalized instruction, and through contemporary assignments, like collaborative Google Docs, and all kinds of fun, fun things like podcasts and, and, and uh, other contemporary uh, projects that you'll be working on. So the program is, is held over a period of 10 months. Yes, that's one class per month. And you'll dive into SEL concepts, theory, and learn about best practices and all these wonderful strategies that our National Teacher Award winners have shared with us. And you'll apply this learning through experiential collaborative projects with your fellow passionate SEL educators. So very quickly, I just want to share three unique attributes about our program. And we have the Miramar Air Force Base going over my head, so hopefully you can't hear that. First, our candidates share with us that they love the cohort model. A new cohort begins every month. Your fellow classmates become your life supports. And through our weekly professional learning communities over Zoom in real time, we build our learning community with your classmates and connect with your incredible instructors. Secondly, as you engage in authentic research that is connected to you and your educational workplace, you'll develop an academic mindset and you'll conduct action research. It's so much fun. It's not scary, trust me. Thirdly, our graduates tell us that the program was transformational and helped them to apply the SEL lens to the world around them. Our candidates inspire others, they inspire me, they inspire everyone in the program, and they become leaders in SEL. So I really invite you to join us on this journey, and I look forward to working with the NU scholars. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Chandler, and thank you so much again, Dr. Pulowski, for sharing about this amazing opportunity. Thank you to Dr. Lee, and of course, thank you to um, all of our uh, teachers that participated today with us. Um, you have definitely inspired and reminded us of the true power of educators. So I feel like another round of applause is, is necessary for you all. Um, we look forward to you uh, joining us um, at our next webinar on February 23rd. The topic will be the power of listening with compassion and mindfulness with author and speaker Carolyn McCanders. Um, thank you all for joining us today and for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hear about the inspirational work at National University and at, with our National University Teacher Award winners. Uh, once this webinar comes to a close, a survey will launch on your screen. Uh, it's a very short uh, and we would really greatly appreciate your feedback. Uh, we do read your feedback and take your responses seriously. Uh, so to this day, your responses have helped us build more successful webinars. We also encourage you to connect with us. Have an amazing and inspiring day, um, inspiring all of your students. Thank you so much.